Welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. I am but one of your hosts, Sean Boyle, and with me is... Ashley Ma. And welcome to the half hour, but once a month, <laughs> half hour radio program. I'm sorry, every week. Every week radio. But a half hour television program every month, thanks to our great partnership with WLX, the St. Lucie County Public Education TV channel. I'm sure I didn't say that right, but <laughs> people get it. They understand it. But welcome to the half hour, best way you can spend 30 minutes, or if you're listening to the radio, best way you can start your Sunday by li listening to about what resources and things that are available to all families in St. Lucie County. Now, we at the Children's Services Council, if you're watching this video, clearly are not <laughs> TV professionals. And if you listen to the radio program, you know we're not radio professionals. But what we do do at the Children's Services Council is five things for our community. And those five things are, one, make sure every baby's a healthy baby. Two, stop child abuse before it happens. Three, keep kids off the streets. Four, keep them in school, and five, keep them off drugs, alcohol, and other risky behaviors by offering programs and resources available to all families in St. Lucie County. Yay! Aren't you glad I counted those down? I, I, it's important to keep I know, track. Yeah. I understand. I could have added a sixth one. You just, <laughs> that's why I have to keep track. I, I got it. So there's a couple different ways where you can learn more about them outside of just listening to or watching this awesome show. Um, we have a website, which is cscslc.org. And on that website, you can get information about all of the programs that we fund, um, read some success stories about families who have actually gone through some of those programs. Um, all the contact information is available there. But we also have these lovely, I see you brought props. I, I brought props. Call me Vanna. Um, <laughs> these lovely family guides, which are available out in the community at a lot of our program partner locations. Um, we also have them on our website, which you can download yourself. We actually have just uploaded a new one onto our website that has a couple new programs for this year, which we're excited about. Um, but we have these that we can bring out to your business location, your church, whoever, um, to distribute them out in the community as well. And also, wait, wait, but wait, there's more. Oh, wait. Down here on the bottom of our family guide um, is a little information about our mobile app. We have a free mobile app that's available on Apple and Android platforms which again gives you quick access to all of those program partners um, can call right from your phone. It's really easy. I'm glad I brought a prop. Uh, thank you for doing that. For radio show listeners, I brought a prop. <laughs> <laughs> it was the family guy. And while we encourage everybody to listen to this radio show once a week on 104.5 The Flame or watch us every month, um, if you'd like for us to come out and speak to you, whether it be your, your team meeting at where you work or a congregation, we are more than happy to do that. We bring the show on the road, if you will, not quite as entertaining, but we bring the show on the road. But more importantly, we connect people to what resources and things that are available for children and families. And that's really what the whole point of the show is about. Um, hopefully you're a little entertained, a little <laughs> we bit. We, we try, try, we try. A little entertained, but more importantly, hopefully you walk away with a resource or something that you kind of just keep in the back of your mind. Maybe you don't need it right now for your family, or maybe your family doesn't even live here. But maybe if you go to your uh, church on Sunday or at the water cooler, do people still hang out at the water coolers? At the water cooler at the workplace or just your neighborhood, you have that resource in your mind. And then, then when you find somebody who can benefit from it, you know where to go, where to turn to connect the people to the resources in our community. You know, I feel like even sometimes when we have guests on the show, we learn a lot about programs that we know very well in the community. Absolutely. But we always learn something on the show. So it's it's a really good opportunity to get familiar with the programs and the services that we all have available to us. Um, and like Sean said, you know, it might not be something that you or your family needs, but I guarantee you someone that you know is going to have some need in the future where they can, can have access to one of these programs because we've got them here. So it's October. It is. I, I thought about for the show, but I didn't think uh -oh. we'd go for it because it's October. It's Halloween. <laughs> I thought we should wear masks during the whole show. I don't think I could do that. You don't think you could do no, that? I right. could, if you had a mask on, I couldn't keep a straight face and talk to you. I think I'd be better with a mask on, to be honest with you. I would have to keep eye contact. I could be totally distracted and nobody would know. Uh, you know. But more importantly, besides it being obviously October 31st is Halloween, and make sure you're obviously safe. And during Halloween, if you have kids, make sure that they are well visible. Mm. You know, if they're going to go as something that's wearing dark colors, make sure they have a flashlight or something reflective on. Um, but if you are coming home to your neighborhood at, in the evening or after work, make sure you drive very carefully on October 31st because there will be little trick-or-treaters out there. And we make sure that everybody's safe. 
We always post a really good um, tip sheet, too, about a week before Halloween. So keep an eye on our Facebook page because we've got some good tips on there, not just for kids to keep them safe, but for some of our special needs community um, to address some of the things that, you know, maybe why the kid is coming to your door and not saying trick-or-treat. Um, there's a lot of special considerations to make. So And if your an child doesn't like that. Milky Ways, feel free to bring them to the Children's <laughs> Services Council's <laughs> my favorites. I'm just kidding. Nice. But we do have something that's upcoming. Yeah. You want to Actually, um, we had the opportunity to have them as guests on our radio show last week. So if you listened to the radio show last week, you got to hear a little bit about them. I think we were super impressed um, with the young lady that they brought. But Pace Center for Girls, for the second year in a row, is doing a really phenomenal poetry event called Hope Flows. Um, they have identified with some of the girls in their program that poetry is a great outlet for them. It gives them an opportunity to talk about their feelings and to work through some of the issues that they're having. And they are performing those original poems on Friday, October 20th at the Black Box at the Sunrise Theater. Um, we actually heard about it last year after the fact, um, but we're so impressed by the, the stories that we were hearing about the girls that we invited them to come to our holiday concert. And I think they just blew but, everyone yes. away. Um, so we're really excited about this event. Uh, tickets are available at the box office at Sunrise Theater. They're $15. Um, again, it's Friday, October 20th at 7 p.m. We're going to be there. We're excited. We are literally leaving this film studio, <laughs> this TV studio, to go tickets. get our tickets to make sure we get them. But they're only $15 for adults, $12 I think so. for children under the age of 18. But it's a, a, it's a show for the whole family. And again, it supports Pace Center for Girls. And it's going to be a very powerful night. It is. So again, October 20th at the Black Box Theater, right next to the Sunrise. It's actually part of the Sunrise. Yeah. 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., $15 tickets. That's a good deal. Yep. Not much you can do for 15 bucks anymore. No, there's not. There's not. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, you want to introduce our guest? Are we ready for our guest? Sure, yeah. They're waiting patiently. They are. Almost too patiently. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're not. Um, we, we at Children's Services Council have the benefit of having a really great partnership with um, Treasure Health, which is formerly known as Treasure Coast Hospice. We'll, we'll give you the formerly known title. Um, but we have worked with um, this program for a while uh, through their youth grief, grief services. Um, and we're going to talk about all the different kind of outlets that that covers. Um, but I do, before we get started, I want to say that we recently, very recently, um, have called on you guys and your program to help us with some community needs that we felt very strongly about. And these two ladies that are here with us today didn't balk at any of the suggestions that we made. We thought it was going to be like an hour <laughs> meeting to convince them, and it was over in five minutes. So, so uh, all of that to say, uh, we are very lucky to have a program like this in our community. We are even luckier that the people who are running that program are as committed as Jackie and Kate, who are, you're going to meet in a second. Um, but we wanted to bring them on the show to really talk about that because we think that it's sort of one of the hidden gems, um, one of the programs that not a lot of people are familiar with or know exists or know that they can access. Um, but it really is important uh, for a lot of people in our community who have benefited from the services that you guys provide. So, all having of that, said all that, having said all that, um, we've got Jackie Nardone and Kate Priest with us today from the Youth Grief Services Program at Treasure Health. Right. Mm -hmm. I say that right? Uh, formerly known as Treasure Coast Hospice. Um, so, you know, it is a new name. And if people have driven by your building on Midway, it's a new logo and a new look. But the services are the same. You're still providing the same services out of that building. So, Jackie, tell us a little bit about what is what all is included in sort of the youth grief services kind of title. Sure. So our youth and family program um, is a program that's designed to support children and families um, that are either experiencing the death of a loved one or the sickness of a loved one or they've experienced a death. Um, we've had lots of different outlets how we can serve them. We provide individual counseling, group counseling, family counseling, we go to the schools, we go to patients' homes. Um, we really go anywhere where the need is um, we've gone to agencies, we've even been creative and you know, met them at a restaurant if we needed to. Um, we provide crisis counseling, really whatever that need is, we're going to be there for them. So I'm curious, 
and I wrote this down, and I was probably interrupting the show, but so do you have at Treasure Health, do you have like a name change jar? So if anybody <laughs> says Treasure Coast Hosp Hospice, they have to put a dollar in, and that helps fundraise some of these services. We should have that. I'm just throwing that out there. We probably I would, be the guilty. I would, I would probably have you to take out most. a loan. Yeah. There. You wouldn't, they would just take your paycheck, right? Yeah. right. So, so. And put it right in the jar. Well, but I think it's... Sorry, I couldn't let that go. Yeah. I think it's important to note that part of the reason behind that name change was because you know, hospice is sort of well known. Everybody understands what hospice is, but you guys do a lot more than that. And that was really the push to change the name, which I think for our community is a benefit. You know, they need to know that all of those additional services are Absolutely. available there. You know, Treasure, Treasure Coast Hospice, our old name, um, was limiting. That we, you know, we provide the grief counseling, we have a palliative care program, we have a Little Treasures pediatric program, and we have a community education arm so to speak um, so Treasure Coast Hospice just says hospice mm -hmm. so the idea was to move towards a name that would be all-encompassing of all the services that we have hence Treasure Health the other piece that is important um, with our new outreach and marketing is we want to really focus on on living on the life and like you know having a because hospice is, is at the end, but there's so much more living that can be done even when the patient is dying. And the families is what's left, and we want to focus on the living and not so much of the, to the dying part. Mm. So anybody who's had children, you have children, I have children, <laughs> we're all children at one time. We all experience death <laughs> and grief, you know, whether it be, you know, hopefully it's not until they're older. Um, but I can remember, like, the first real experience I had when my uh, grandmother passed away. And I remember it was almost like this expectation of how you need to behave. That's what I remember from it. As, mm -hmm. Not necessarily the loss, but this expectation, hey, you're, you know, you're sad. 12 years old, you should be doing this. I, m I remember that always struck me as mm -hmm. odd. So can you talk a little bit about why it's so important that children, you know, kind of grief, go through it, understand it, and how important it is for your services? You, go. Okay. you guys can coin, you guys okay. can coin flip. <laughs> I think one of the biggest things that we hear a lot is people have this kind of conception that children are resilient. That is true. Children are resilient, but they need the tools to be able to attain that resiliency. And oftentimes those tools aren't present in feelings identification and coping with those feelings that are happening. So they get all these feelings when you know, someone is going through the dying process or has already died, they don't know how to identify what they're feeling. It's just kind of all in there like a bunch of junk and they don't know how to get it out and then manage it in a healthy way. So that I think is one of the most important things that we do try to focus on, especially in our youth and family program, because that's so important and people tend to kind of, I think, Oh, kids are resilient. I, I swear to you, I hear it every day. I hear it from parents. I hear it from guidance counselors. I hear it from social workers. I hear it from across the board because that's kind of the feeling that oh, they're resilient. Um, but they can't be resilient if they don't know how to do that. And so that's our job to help come alongside them. And then the other piece of that that's so important is, you know, grief, as you can imagine, is very cultural. And so looking at the perspective of grief from different cultural backgrounds is very, very important. And I think that that's something that we also do pretty well in our program is identifying what that cultural background is and really working within the framework with the family and with the child to kind of help them through that. And I, I'm glad that you said that you do work with the whole family because I think a lot of times, you know, we anticipate that kids are going to react one way or another, but they're often taking cues from the adults in their life. So if those adults don't have the proper coping mm -hmm. mechanisms, they're setting a really bad example for the kids that we're trying to teach those to. So working with the whole family is really important. It is, and one of the key pieces of working with the whole family is the fact that when the death happens, whether it's a parent or a grandparent that was very involved, an aunt, a cousin, a, a sibling, that whole dynamic of that family changes because of that death. And so the family is kind of left trying to figure out how, to, how, do, we, how do we do this now? What's it's our new, new normal, normal. Yeah. and how do we do this? And so being able to bring them in together as a family 
whether in a just a family session with just that family to kind of talk through what does it look like now and what are the changes and how can we help you put this back together. Um, that's one way we do that. The other way is also through our family group nights that we have that are really a lot of fun. We do those the first and the third Thursday of every month and we start with a potluck dinner so everybody brings something. We all have dinner together, give the families a chance to interact with each other. Um, and then we have some sort of clinically based activity, which is always a lot of fun. <laughs> we always make it fun. And um, <laughs> so that's something that we offer as well that's so important, not just for the children to connect with other children that have experienced a loss, but the parents to be able to connect and see that, oh, well, so your kid is reacting this way, mine is too. And will that make, okay, so I'm not like a horrible parent and, and I'm doing this and it's okay. Um, so that's a really important uh, piece of what we do and that's something that's available as well. One of the neat things about our family group night is um, when a family first comes in, they're usually bringing in, I'm just gonna say like, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. They go, they go and pick up a box of chicken. And as they start to get better and start to, you know, learn some coping skills and start to heal a little bit, they're taking pride and they want to make their best casserole that maybe their husband loved. Mm -hmm. So they bring that and they share that with the group and, they, and it also becomes part of that healing process mm -hmm. of, my husband like this and mm -hmm. I want to share that with you. And they, so it's also an indicator that they're starting to get better. So it's always awesome. nice to see that. Yeah. So if someone is in a situation where their family has experienced some loss, what is the best way for them to reach out to you? Do they do it through the guidance counselor at their children's school? Do they just call and ask what they need? What What's the best way for them to get to There's you? Um, multiple ways they can do that. They can go through the guidance counselor. They can certainly call us. Can I get the number now? Yep. 772-403-4530. Um, or they can certainly visit our website, which is www.treasurehealth.org. And there's actually a, I don't know what it's actually called, but like a, a click to call button okay. that you can press on it and say, please call me between 10 and 12. I have questions about oh, nice. your services. And then we also have a, an email through the website that you can email um, specifically for grief counseling. I love that you can schedule a call because we talk so frequently about how, you know, especially in times of crisis, the right. hardest thing to do is make a call. Right. So if I can say, no, you call me, that's so mm -hmm. much, you know, I feel like that's a big relief. And the most, of the, most of the calls are that, you know, the contact us come through like at 10, 11 o'clock mm -hmm. at night when the parents are quieted yep. and the kids are down and they're, they start thinking and they reach out for help. So it's a safe way to say, that's awesome. I need help. Now when we talk about loss and grief, you know, we've talked about a significant other or a grandmother or a sibling, but it could even be an animal, a, a beloved pet, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So how does a, a parent, you know, if, let's say the dog, family dog dies. I mean, that's happened to all of us. <laughs> I think the family dog dies and it's emotional and it's stressful. Uh, what should the parent be looking for, for cues to when they should make that call? Or should just any law, should they call you? Um, when they start to notice like significant changes in their child, um, you know, we, because within the scope of service, you know, of, of what you're going to see, this is a normal range. And then beyond the normal, where just say, you know, the child's not sleeping, um, like at all. Like they'll go to sleep at 10, and they wake up at 12, and they wake up again at 6. Mm -hmm. um, changes in, you know, their, their regular habits. They don't want to see your friend. They want to just stay home in their room. Anything that's like significant change from the norm. Um, and even a parent can call us and say, this is what's happening with my child. Is this normal? Mm -hmm. And then we can talk with them because that's one of the biggest things that, I, that we hear over and over is, I just want to make sure my kid's okay. Right. Is this normal? And then we you know, take the time and, and sometimes just a phone call with the mm -hmm. parents, explain that yes, it's normal or maybe it's not so normal, can you bring them in and we'll talk more and we give them education. And, mm -hmm. um, that's gonna, yeah. and again, I'm just gonna give out the number. Anybody who listens to the radio show knows that this <laughs> is gonna happen at least three more times. But the phone number is 772 403 Four five three zero, and I really like that one that you can schedule mm -hmm. if you go to the website, um, or the, I think you even have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. correct? I have Facebook. Um, everybody's on Facebook, <laughs> um, but uh, I think it's important that you know you can just call in because I know as a parent sometimes you know, especially in, like you said in times of, of grief or crisis, sometimes you just want to know that this is normal. Right. Because, you know, like you said, there's a new normal when grief happens mm -hmm. and kind of like a reset and how you, you know, look at things and the family dynamic. But it's good to know that at the very minimum, at least there's somebody they can talk to. Mm -hmm. 
even if it's just on the phone. Mm -hmm. Because I know, like you mentioned, the hardest thing a lot of times for families to do is to make that call. Um, and, you know, if you build up that courage mm -hmm. just to make the call, you may, may never even actually see these fine right. uh, people, <laughs> but at least get that reassurance on the phone. And when they do call, this is something that we cover every show, what should they expect? Like what information do they need to have on hand? Well, it's always helpful for us to know what was, you know, who was the loss? Who, who died? Was it the pet? Was it grandma? Was it uncle? Was it sibling? And sometimes um, it's, you know, depending on the situation, it is helpful to know the, the um, cause of how did that person die because that can kind of change, obviously. You know, as you can imagine, you know, something that's traumatic, um, you know, a sudden traumatic loss can create other additional issues that we would want to try to identify rather than if it was, you know, grandma who everybody loved and you know she was 98 years old there's still that grief there but when you have that sudden traumatic loss that can create so many other issues for the individual and then within the family as well I'm going to um, interrupt you real quick yes that's please. Okay. <laughs> one of the things that um, our community may not know which I think is really important is that whether it's Treasure Coast Hospice or Treasure Health um, we provide services to anyone whose loved one has died um, so if their loved one died under hospice care, we can see them. But if their loved one didn't receive hospice care, if it was a, if it was a sudden unexpected death or um, a car accident or any kind of um, not an illness, we can provide them services as well. So I know that's when Kate was that saying, was a good point. you know, traumatic. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a, and it, wasn't, it wasn't expected. So right. that's really important for people to know here that we provide grief counseling to anyone mm -hmm. affected by death. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good point. I'm glad you made it. That was very good. Um, but the other, the other piece of that is when they call in, and as Jackie mentioned, sometimes it is just, you know, just a phone call. Is this normal? Is this? We can provide resources. You know, we've had times where people call in, we get their email address, and we send them links um, mm -hmm. to some information, or we send them, you know, email them some of our information. We provide maybe books that they can share with their child, especially, you know, if it's a loss of a pet, there's several, you know, really good books out there that are very helpful. And so those are things that we can provide that can help the parent be empowered to help their child and help themselves in that way. And one thing that I didn't hear that you say you asked for is you don't ask for insurance information or payment oh, information good point. because mm -hmm. this is offered to the community at no cost. Right. So it's um, our because of our grant funders and donors, we're able to provide a um, service, you know, a high quality service for um, without charging an insurance or a, or a fee. We do ask for donations because it's, you know, we're running a, a grief support center, um, but if unable to pay, then absolutely they still come in and we'll provide the same quality of service that you would get if you were paying. That's great. That's fantastic. And you, and you mentioned something, you know, we're, we're talking and using examples of, you know, death of a grandparent, death of a family pet, but it could be a death within the community mm -hmm. that maybe you didn't even know that person, but, you know, maybe it was geographically in the vicinity of where you live, or maybe it's somebody that went to the same school and maybe that child didn't even know. Even that can impact mm -hmm. a, a family and a child. Absolutely. And those are things that, um, you know, when you, when you hear on you know, if it's an unexpected death and it's, you hear on the news, like grief counselors are at the schools, that is us. Mm -hmm. we're, we're there um, when we go into a school or an agency and provide crisis support and kind of debriefing. Um, and that's kind of what prompted our conversation mm -hmm. last week, that there were some kids that were observing some um, deaths in their neighborhoods and, you know, we said we need to do something to help support them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's, we're, we're called in wherever there is a a need to be there and we have made those calls to you frequently yes. <laughs> yes, like. yes, we have. Um, yeah. but but I think that's an uh, you know an additional important piece of this that it, it it doesn't have to be a very close family member or friend or right. or whatever it is but having the experience of a, a significant loss in our community or surrounding neighborhoods or whatever it is has an impact on our kids mm -hmm. and unfortunately might often be overlooked as oh well you know he's behaving badly at school today but it's not related to this um, so you know finding a way to provide those coping skills and teaching them mm -hmm. feelings identification and all of those things is really just a life skill that we can start early that that we can get to them now 
Exactly, and that's a really good point um, about the things that happen in the community, and it can that can then bring up things that happened, you know, maybe two years ago, you know, a, a significant loss for a child, you know, even a couple of years ago, you know, even with something like what happened recently in Las Vegas, with all that media exposure, it's on the news, the kids are talking about it, it's out there, and for some kids that can bring that, that anxiety back, it can bring back those feelings of grief just because it's such a huge, you know, um, happening that is just we're bombarded with it, mm -hmm. you know, constantly. It's kind of, it's emotionally, it can be emotionally exhausting and, and bring up those other things. And part of the reason why we wanted to have you on the show, you know, we do a weekly radio program. I've plugged that several times. <laughs> 104.5 The Flames, Sundays at 10 a.m. We do a weekly radio show, but we do television once a month on the education channel. And one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on the education channel is because it's not just parents and grandparents that can call you, but it can be institutions, mm -hmm. for example, schools, churches, even, you know, sport league teams if something happens. So, again, you know, you know, a lot of listeners and viewers are very active in their community. So, if, you know, something happens in the neighborhood or something happens at the school or the Little League team or something, that, again, that number, 403-4530, is who they need to call. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we go to anyone or anywhere we're needed. You know, people can call us and say, actually, I think a couple of years ago we had a baseball player mm -hmm. a youth die and the coach asked us to come out to his team one night and we did we sat there with them and we we processed and we helped give them tools and just talked about the loss and the memories of the kid and it's important you can't just put it away because kids are resilient but you can't put it away because it it still is with them mm -hmm. and we want and we want to teach them and we want to prevent future problems from happening and so we, we do a lot of coping skills and um hopefully prevent future problems from, from occurring. And we have a, a couple minutes left on the show, but I also know that you have something kind of big that happens, I believe, each summer, right? Is it the summer? Spring. spring. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> Starts with an S. Right. Uh, <laughs> in the spring, Camp Good Grief. Yes. Can you just okay. briefly explain that? Sure. Um, I don't remember the date off the top of my head, but we... It's the end we, of April. <laughs> at the end of April this year. Spring, not summer. <laughs> spring. <laughs> The end of April this year, um, we are doing our annual Camp Good Grief, and this is just a really, really great time for kids who have experienced a loss to come together and have support from each other, have an opportunity to play and have fun. Um, a lot of times they, they feel like they're not ever going to have fun again and, and sometimes even feel guilty, you know, being able to have fun and just kind of forget about all of that. Um, so it's just a really great time. We have a good weekend of, you know, quite a few clinically based activities, of course, but then a lot of fun and a lot of time for the kids just to connect with each other because for kids that peer support piece is so important to have. Awesome. And you've so, assured and us several times, clinically based <laughs> activities are fun. <laughs> Yes, they, they, are are. Fun. they are fun. You have no idea. They are <laughs> so much fun. But. Um, it, for, so for our camp, um, we do charge a nominal fee. Um, a registration fee. A registration fee, and I'm $20. not, $20, $25? Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> Can't remember the date or the fee, but it's set, we'll and we do more have information the information. as it comes closer. And if you're interested, obviously, in finding out more information about that, then you can go to the website and, and have us give you a call. Awesome. Great, well, thank, thank you very you much thank for you. coming this on. And again, Thanks. community, the way this show works is you have to hopefully be a little entertained, but more importantly, get the information and pass it, pass it on. And again, for Treasure Health Grief Services, 772-403-4530. And that's our show. That's it. If you enjoyed this TV program, catch us on the radio every Sunday at 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Flame. And remember, it's our children, our community, our future. We're all in this together. We'll see you next time.